All right. So as everyone knows, we are in a global housing crisis and nobody can afford a home anymore. So I have been thinking about this for a while and I think I have one piece of the puzzle that might just be a great or good idea at least. So pretty much all cities in the U.S. since, I'd say, post-1950 have developed in a suburban and office park sprawl and most cities have a parking requirement for these businesses which are woefully exaggerated and it ultimately results in a huge glut of parking spaces and ultimately completely wasted land in especially the bay area where everyone is condensed into a giant bowl but I've noticed this as I've been driving around pretty much all of the Bay and all of Northern California for my job. And the vast majority of large office complexes and even some retail areas have a huge amount of completely unused parking spots. So I'm just going to zoom into a random office complex. Looks like we're in either San Jose or Santa Clara right now. And you can see these are just probably tech companies that are just chilling and they have a huge amount of parking and what I can actually do is go into the historical view and we can look at satellite imagery by date so this is January of 2024 August of 2023 May of 2023 and so on and we're still in 2022 but you can see that for the most part only a small amount of these parking spots are actually being used. And now we're in 2019, so this is pre-COVID. And they're using maybe 30% of their spots. In one of the in an area where land is at such a premium. And this the crazy thing is this this pretty much goes for any office complex. So any of these kind of lowish density light industrial or office areas like we're in 2018 I'll go 2019 let's see there were some cars here but you can see yeah even though you can see that some of these lots are full there's a huge amount of just completely unused land in the South Bay And my crazy idea is since this, since probably, a, let's just be conservative, maybe 15 to 20% of every parking lot has spaces that are just completely unused. What if these spaces were either bought or leased out and converted into land that can be used for tiny homes? So I've been toying on this for a while, and I don't know if this is crazy or not, but I want to at least get some feedback on this because I feel like this could be a great idea. So parking spots in the U.S. are roughly a standardized dimension. So what if somebody started a business that essentially partnered with whatever this business is, whatever the landowner is and you leased these parking spots for say two hundred dollars a month per spot and then you bring in modular tiny homes and you put them on each individual spot so you essentially create housing from land that is completely unused i don't know exactly for this one but for the most part i bet this parking lot let's see let's go back to 2020 20 19, 2018, 2017, yeah, so for the most part, this, this parking lot would be a great candidate. You can see that they definitely use some of it, but this back area of the parking lot, I mean, we're, we're about to get 2015 now, and it's essentially thousands, if not tens of thousands of square feet of 
perfectly fine land that's just completely unused, except for we'll leave their basketball court. We'll uh, we'll be nice about that. But we're we're back in 2013, and this is this is just never been used. So this is kind of kind of what I came up with. This is a tiny home that fits exactly in the footprint of a standard parking spot. And it's not special. It's not a mansion. But it creates housing out of land that's completely, that would be completely used for nothing otherwise. And this is just an example of a two-story little pod home. Kind of cute. It has a little, this is supposed to be like a little rooftop garden if you want to do that with solar panels and Wood panels, you know, looks kind of modern, kind of fun. Here is a single version, just a one story. Uh, here's a three story version of the pods. But the cool thing is once you put them all together into a parking lot, you can kind of see it starts to build a micro neighborhood almost. So this is, I size the spots exactly, the standard American dimensions for a parking lot. And you can see when you kind of mix the densities, there's three next to two next to one. It creates a little micro neighborhood. And essentially what whatever, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 parking spots can turn into housing for probably at least 20-ish people. Otherwise this would be completely unused. The landowner, receives rent per parking spot and then these these tiny homes would be extremely cheap to build i mean you could probably build the one story one for under 20,000 the two story maybe for 40 and then three story maybe 80 which can be expensive but if you incorporate the $200 a month for the parking spot plus the cost to build it you could lease out these units see a two story unit for under a thousand dollars a month, the three-story unit, maybe twelve, thirteen hundred a month, and then the one-story you could probably even lease out for like six hundred dollars a month. I mean, this would be a third of what everything in the South Bay is going for. And obviously, this is not a perfect plan. I mean, it would be much better to have European-style apartment complexes that are planned and built and look nice. Like these are great. You know, they have pools. They're pretty much higher density housing as well. But these this costs hundreds of millions of dollars to build this giant apartment complex. You need to zone it. You need permits. It takes probably a decade to get this all approved and built. And this will still need city involvement to get the approval for this. But the cool thing about this is you can literally build the houses off-site, ship them via flatbed truck and just plop them down, probably bolt them into the asphalt itself. And for the most part, it's just plug and play. So within a couple months, you can generate 50 units of housing just along this back wall here. So I don't know, this, it seems, it seems like a great idea. It's, it's, there's definitely a lot of moving pieces. You'd need a city to buy in and they'd have to change their zoning code to allow for some sort of pilot program just to allow this to happen because this is zoned as commercial so no one's technically allowed to live here yet but from talking with cities at least a little bit in undergrad most of them are at least the city of santa clara understand the severity of the housing crisis so this could be a pilot program that they're willing to be involved with and help out with and it could easily be started at an extremely small scale. You could literally just take this strip of six spaces here, test it out, put six tiny homes on it, and then take feedback, improve it, and slowly grow it to apply to pretty much any city in the United States that has some sort of suburban sprawl development pattern. Some of the, the downsides is it's not going to work in cities that were built probably pre-1960s, like San Francisco. It's just way too dense. There's just not enough parking, and any parking that there is is going to be completely used. So San Francisco, most of um, the North Bay, as well as 
Upper East Bay are going to be way too dense and way too full, but pretty much the entire South Bay and probably even like these uh, newer density developments, you, yeah, you, I mean, you can just see that there's a gluttony of parking that's just completely unused and ultimately perfect opportunity for new housing projects. So this is going on long enough, but... This is, this is kind of the idea I've been working on for a little bit, and I'd love some feedback. Tell me I'm crazy. This might, be, this might be way too much to bite off, but I think it could work. Thanks.